that for like wisdom teeth removal, your health insurance will not cover it because they go, oh, it's dental, we don't do that. Okay, great, then we had dental insurance at the time. Oh, the dental insurance, no, we don't cover that either. Called him to say, hey, are you willing to take her on as a patient because she lives here and she needs something? He said, no. COVID-19 alert, before you go, verify info for oral and facial surgery center. How scary. But right now, we are a little late for my um, oral surgeon. So let's go do that, guys, come on. Today is a semi-sad, gloomy, productive day, but we keep moving forward. If you guys haven't seen my recent vlog yesterday of talking about my narcolepsy episode, that was actually early today, but we got two vlogs in one day for you guys. Well, we got two vlogs out of one day. You guys will be getting it as if it's back to back or different days. Not nah, pretty much, let's give you guys an update on our insurance. But first, you guys like my hair? I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I have no idea how to do my hair. This is your husband, Paul. Can I help you? Yeah, he takes my phone calls. I don't like talking on the phone. Sorry, guys. Yes. We're right, eating. Mm, 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 mm. Anyway, so as you guys just heard, Paul just got on the phone with the doctor's office. There's so much to update. Paul, go ahead, take it over. Come along with me, your favorite character here on this Come vlog. Come along with me. So, okay, that, yeah. that, that's what I married. Yeah. <laughs> Still don't regret it yet. Poor. <laughs> so, this morning I have been up since 8 a.m. Making phone calls since about 8.15 a.m. And before lunchtime, 12, uh, I only got like one thing done, honestly, from all the phone calls I did. So, with an HMO, you need to have a primary. And the everything has to go through the primary for authorizations. For example, if you need to go see, for me, a gastroenterologist, I need to go to my primary. They then submit the prior authorization to the insurance company. The insurance company approves it. Then I get the referral. I can then make my appointment to go see the gastroenterologist. That's fine. Now, we're looking for a high-risk OBGYN, which Janice needs, and no big deal. I successfully switched over, or I thought I did, our primary care from a previous office to a new one. Uh, we do like the new doctor and she's very nice and is willing to help us which is good and mine was switched over but then i got news today after a week and a half of waiting for these authorizations that janice's primary is still the old doctor and the problem is that the, our new pcp can't send a referral if it's not her pcp registered in the system even though i changed it three four weeks ago so i had to call the insurance company get online i was literally online with Florida Blue for like at least like an hour, hour and a half, switching that over and uh, to get it retroactive back to the original date so that we don't get a bill when we just saw our, our new primary. So it's retroactive, thankfully, uh, we got that covered, but it took a long time. So, called the, the primary care, hey, you guys are now officially hers, can you please send the referral? Oh, and our system, it still doesn't show. Florida Blue system may, but our hours until it like activates and updates and whatever, it's gonna take a minute. So I'm like, great, how long is it gonna take? They're like, it can be an hour, it can be three days, we don't know. So I was like, that's not gonna work. What, I'm, what you're gonna do is this, give the reference number, send in the referral, and send it as urgent. 72 hour turnaround time, if it's urgent, as well as with the, with the reference number, they can look that up and say, yeah, perfect, no problem, and push it through. So that's what we're trying to accomplish right now. Now, another thing, I'm trying to figure out how to get back on our Blue Select PPO plan from Florida Blue. PPO plan that we had before was amazing. I love it and I never knew I would miss it this much. It's kind of sad and pathetic, but I still love it and missed it. And I've been trying to figure out how. Uh, there is, we may qualify for a special enrollment period very soon. And no, it's not having a child, it's something else. With that special enrollment period, I have 60 days to enroll into a new plan through the marketplace. Now here's the thing though we had to switch to the HMO from Florida Blue because on our PPO plan from last year, for those of you who remember, we incurred a bill of like $4,000. I'm not paying $4,000 for an insurance plan that I never used, okay? And they told me it was canceled, that was the best part. So, not a big deal. I'm working on that. Now, 
I am trying to figure out that if I switch back to the PPO plan, if I'm still going to have that bill or if I can just start a new cycle. And again, it's not like I used the services and didn't pay for it. I never used the services and I didn't want them. My plan was canceled, but they still billed me. And yeah, that's how it's going. Oh, another phone call. Hold on. All right, that was our Janice's old primary care doctor's office. Speak of the devil. Yeah, exactly. But they're just like, hey, how are you doing? And I was like, what do you guys care? We switched primary care's doctors over. And they're like, oh, okay, no problem. We'll send over any records if you need to. And I was like, you guys don't even have any records of ours. But that's fine. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And it's not the, the guy's fault. You know what I mean? So I was like, no, it's okay. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Yeah. Another thing is our new primary care. We told her about Janice's pots and the hydration and all the stuff that Janice needs. And she's like, I don't take care of that, but I'm going to try to help you find someone who can. And we're like, perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And lo and behold, the doctors that she gave to us is one that Janice has already seen. Or they're in like Jacksonville, Gainesville, or Naples. And we took her, Jackie, to the doctor, the pot specialist in, in Gainesville. Gainesville. I remember so that. we met him too. Yeah, so imagine, we've seen like three of these four doctors, supposedly, in the state of Florida who can handle pots. Now, there is one in Orlando. Yes. But he's only a pediatric pots specialist. And he only takes patients if it's congenital or you were born with it. In instantly for so pediatric and you know our doctor's office primary call them called him to say hey are you willing to take her on as a patient because she lives here and she needs something he said no and they're like okay no problem I understand mm -hmm. but uh, once your patients outgrow pediatric care where do you send them for their POTS care the doctor's response this is what they said they started laughing because of how ridiculous it is they said wherever they can yep so imagine the doctor Great, I took care of you all these years. Great, doctor, who do I go to for my care? I don't know, you figure it out, bro, not me. Yep. So, yeah, that's <laughs> funny. And what made it better, I was just like, so, what do we do from here? Doctor's recommendation, you must travel. I knew that. It's just hard to, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. She's gonna give me a script. Must travel to see Pop's doctor. Yep. And they, they wanted me to make a decision right there and then. And I was like, We'll, we'll wait until we see each other in the next and most like and most likely these doctors we're gonna have to pay cash for because they're not gonna be in this hmo network at oh. all so um it sounds bad the pot specialist that we saw before was not in our pp or in our blue select network it was in the blue options which is a bigger network so we did have to pay cash out of pocket but he was nice enough that uh you know they did not charge us as much and we were able to do some like online skype telemedicine visits before this whole corona thing he offered those um, mm -hmm. because we had to travel two, three hours to drive there, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And he actually knows I'm truly sick. And takes it seriously. Yeah, so he's just like, I understand if you can't come see me. All these other doctors, like, the primary, we're asking the coronavirus, it is getting worse. Here no, here, here's the best part. You call them, and before, it didn't say anything on the prompt. Now the new prompt says, we are now offering, once again, tele telemedicine health visits online so you don't have to come in person. I was like, oh, perfect, so we don't have to go, and I can do it online. And I call to reschedule our in-person appo appointments for online, and they go, no, we don't do that. And I was like, but your prompt says that. So guys, that's just a small portion of what has gone on so far today. Uh, it's currently 1.30, and I still have a bunch of things on my to-do list to get done by today. A few more phone calls, figuring out new doctors because I need to go see a dermatologist as well. Which, uh, thankfully, our HMO, I do not need a authorization to go see a dermatologist. But yeah, so it's not many doctors. It's only like OBGYNs. You don't need a, you don't need an authorization. A chiropractor, which I had no idea of, and a dermatologist are the only ones you do not need an authorization for to go see. So that's cool. At least that. Would and the insurance uh, still cover it? Yeah, they will. Oh, that's so it's like a PPO. You just make your appointment and you go. That's it. Um, those are the only exceptions. That's it. Everything else, you need the authorization from your primary. So guys, that is so far what we're dealing with right now. I will give you an update maybe later today and doing like a sit rep of uh, overall what has happened during the day. So we are on our way to the oral surgeon. I will not lie, Paul has a lot of... Uh, He's not happy with this appointment. Nope. He does not want me to go to this appointment. Hell no. He disagrees yeah. with this appointment. <laughs> Why is that, Ibertus? 
just with everything that's going on, there's more and more cases every single day Getting in the state bad. of Florida. Um, for those of you who do not know, it's reaching 3,000 cases a day in the state of Florida, which yeah. it's actually named one of the highest, one of the worst states now because we're this we're spiking so hard. I will not lie, I woke up this morning looking at my Facebook. Guys, I know I get a lot of friend requests on Facebook. My Facebook is only meant for close family and friends, people I have met in my life, who I've spent time with, so I don't really accept many random friend requests. But I looked on it and I just saw a lot of my friends, their grandparents passed away like these past two days. There's like five. It's getting pretty bad over here and it sounds bad yeah our government does not care someone from our high school also passed away from yeah. coronavirus sadly our government doesn't care it's not that they don't care they just feel like we cannot shut down we need the usa to keep running and like don't get me wrong i understand that the economy it's you can't stop it for that long and expect everything to go back to normal a lot of people are out of work and there's no money the economy isn't stimulated enough but guess what what is gonna be worse everyone dying or getting sick from coronavirus and still not being able to work and infecting more people or taking an economic hit for a few months to try to stop the virus and then pick up obviously the small amount of shutdowns that we have had for these few months to get back to a normal economic point where we were at before is not going to take months. It can take years. But the health and safety and protection of the people of our country, that has to be priority over the economy. Because without people working or surviving or living, you can't really have an economy either. So, of course, things are getting crazy. Our cases are getting worse here in Florida. So, Paula does not agree with me going to this appointment and having, you know, hands be put in my mouth. <laughs> Which uh, can be nerve wracking, but guys, I need to get my wisdom teeth out. I am starting to get a lot of pain. My teeth used to be straight. If you guys go back to my very first vlogs, they looked beautiful. Now it sounds bad. I'm getting self conscious. I don't want to look at them. Luckily, I only have two wisdom teeth at the bottom. My other two up here do not exist. Thank God. Yeah, my bottom teeth are really crooked now, and I'm disappointed, upset kind of with myself for letting this happen but at the same time it's not my fault because sadly my parents were told to get my wisdom teeth out when I was younger but sadly my mom didn't think I had wisdom teeth she said it was a myth like the x-rays were wrong there's no wisdom teeth hold on guys we got a phone call so sadly my parents didn't think there was a necessity since in their minds I didn't have anything wrong which is fine, you know, teach his own, but now, as an adult, I am paying the price for it. You know, I had beautiful straight teeth, now I don't, and in the future I may have to get more braces or, you know, somehow to fix them. So, sadly, we have to do this appointment. I postponed it. The last time I went to this doctor was a year ago. I tried to scrape the money to do the procedure because my insurance doesn't cover it. And sadly, I couldn't make it happen. It is so funny that for like wisdom teeth removal, your health insurance will not cover it because they go, oh, it's dental, we don't do that. Okay, great, then we had dental insurance at the time. Oh, the dental insurance, no, we don't cover that either. Yeah, uh, guys, we really tried to make it work last year, but no insurance covered it apparently, and we have to pay out of pocket for it. And the procedure, if you guys do or don't know, is uh, pretty expensive. So now we're getting to a point I can't wait any longer. It is scary during this COVID virus. We do have a little saved up. We don't want to spend it on it, but you know, we may have to. And also we're thinking of having a future child and I would still get all my dental stuff done now before possibly a child. And I feel like knowing me, my teeth will get worse during even longer periods of waiting. So let us do this. I hate the dentist. I hate doing anything with my teeth but it's not as bad as the ear doctor that is my dentist that's where i will cry kick and scream the dentist i'll, I'll make do but I don't, I don't get why people are so scared to go to the dentist when i go to them, they're like all right go go for it what do you want me to do about it it's just because literally there's no way for you to advocate for yourself when it comes down to your teeth like i feel like when it comes down to the teeth you, you need a degree i don't know i can't just say oh the lr lateral tooth there like there's no way. The only way I can make them in process is by giving them my medication list and saying, hey, while we do this procedure, let's just not have it 
you know, affect other medications or let's be considerate and now I'm going to be in a lot of pain as well. While we are GPSing the oral surgeon, look what pops up. COVID-19 alert. Before you go, verify info for oral and facial surgery center. How scary. COVID-19. There's like now alerts all over for it. Hey, let's see what happens, you know. You never know. Maybe they're going to be dressed head to toe, protecting themselves too. Because you got to think about it. It's not just for our safety. Like, hey, you know, we're freaking out because, you know, they have to be sticking stuff in your mouth and whatnot to take x-rays or whatever it is. But at the same time, it's also for the dentist and the technicians. Because imagine where you droplets come from, you're going to go, ah like that in their face for them to look into your mouth so it's also kind of scary for them too how bad is it that i'm like there take all my covid germs ah! yep that's the mature thing to do if you didn't know it's actually like a trend now that when people are getting arrested they start coughing and go i have covid <coughs> coughing all over the cops and it's like when you do that the cops son of a they have to go get tested now, get two week quarantine and everything, but yeah. All right guys, we're about to go into the office. We are a little late. I hate being late, but it's whatever. I gotta let things roll. It's this up right yeah. here. Okay, fall down. So, we're all dressed up, we're ready to go. Let's do this. Let's see what their coronavirus protocol is. So we have just parked and I see the phone number. We have to call before anything. So let's see what they say. Hello, my wife has an appointment today. We're in the disabled. Go ahead and come in. Oh, oh just okay. coming. Thank you. It's that easy, guys. We'll give you an update after. We are done with my appointment. Now, I found this oral surgeon a while ago. I don't know why I went with them, but Paul didn't understand why I went with them. Paul, how did you like the appointment? Because the first time I went, he wasn't there. How did you like the staff and everything? So cool thing is is one of the nurses that are inside the office who helps the doctor do the surgeries and helps like check people in and out whatever she actually has pots and other chronic illnesses and the first time i went in i gave them my medication list and she saw that i had pots and then she, i remember she walked in for, to the appointment when i was in the room and was like i had to take you because i saw your medication list and i was like well, at first when she said it i was like oh gosh what is she's gonna say she thinks she has narcolepsy because Guys, out of all my conditions, I get told more. I'm also tired too. That means I have narcolepsy. Yeah. I'm tired. But then she talked about pots, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, let's talk about it. So it was so, kind of nice. Today she was actually she was there as well. She came in, she talked to us, and she's like, oh, what's uh, what's the service dog for? And I was like, oh, my wife has pots and narcolepsy. She's like, I knew it, I remembered. <laughs> she's like, I didn't want to be like that person. Like, oh, I remember you, like automatically. So she was trying to be kind of. That was the that. same thing with me. I didn't want to yeah. be like, hey. It's approach it nicely but we both have the same feelings and we just wanted to be like oh my god so, well it's actually really nice because not only is she taking this seriously but the doctor and all the other nurses and medical staff since that nurse has pots they're actually always like helping her and on top of her to yeah. make sure she's okay so she's like trust me the doctor understands what this is and how it actually affects people yeah so the doctor is like super super understanding super knowledgeable he's like listen what we're gonna do is we're gonna put you on this medication this hydration this 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 like everything necessary and that's awesome that he's you know willing to like hey you have it i'm gonna make sure that you're taken care of yeah when i was doing my uh, scans for my teeth i guess they realized my heart rate was actually going up i was watching like right now seven minutes ago it was like at 115 so i guess they could tell and they're like are you okay do you need to sit down do you need water and i just love it i was like thank you but i'm doing great you know i'm pushing through but i love the compassion and education Good. So we went into the appointment and I don't know if I did a vlog last year because once again I did stop vlogging for a while so I don't know if I really recorded my appointment. So what's going on is her wisdom teeth are, in, she only has the bottom two, not the top two, thankfully. They are fully impacted, the bottom to her other teeth. So they're completely, they're coming in like at, an, at a harsh angle and they're impacting and it's scrunching all her bottom teeth together, which is, you know, all her teeth from having braces are now starting to, you know, get clumped up again. Yeah. So yes, that sucks, but it it's okay because it's not the end of the world. All those things can be rectified. Now, the biggest problem is on the x-ray, it shows that, you know, everyone has a nerve running through your jaw on either side. 
and her nerve is very close to her wisdom teeth. So the doctor's like, okay, let's do a quick CT scan. They have the CT scan in their office, which is super awesome. They did a CT scan of the lower jaw and 3D, they look at it and the nerve is like, here's the wisdom tooth, the nerve is right up against it. Yeah. So what happens is that that nerve, they're going to touch it at some point during the surgery. Yeah. And maybe they're not, they're, the doctor's like, I'm going to try my best not to sever it. And he's like, there's no reason why it should be severed. Yeah. Um, because they're not like cutting the jaw, breaking the jaw or anything like that. He's like, the most that's going to happen is while we're removing the tooth, the, the nerve is going to be pushed up against with the removal of, of the tooth during the surgery. What is What does that entail? What happens is whenever you touch a nerve, there's gonna be some extent of nerve damage. Nerves do not regenerate very well, and there's going to be numbness in your jaw. Yeah. Now, this is something that could have been corrected many, many years ago. If you would have done removed your wisdom teeth years ago, the tooth wouldn't have grown so far where it's touching the nerve. Yeah. But unfortunately, parents issues, they should never get it out. And then come to find out when, you know, when she's an adult, we can do it. Oh, hey, it's touching, so you're screwed. Yeah. Um, what's going to happen is it's not going to do the whole jaw or anything like that. It's just going to be the corner of your mouth to the center of your mouth, depending on which side gets touched. Yeah. And the doctor said both sides, usually if the nerve's touching on one side, it's going to be touching on the other side, which it is. Uh, he showed us the whole CT scan, everything in there, and the doctor's like, I'm going to do my best. Um, usually they just extract the whole entire tooth in one piece. Yeah. He's like, for you, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it in half and then extract each half section to be a little bit more careful and try to avoid touching the nerve as much as possible. Yeah. Now, eh, the doctor said it's not permanent, so it can be... Unless it's severed, then. If it's severed, because there are some like jaw surgeries where he was explaining where they actually like cut the jaw and that nerve gets severed. Uh, that's like for cosmetic repair, yeah. cosmetic or like repair surgery, stuff like that. So he's like, that's not your case, but there's always a possibility of nerve damage. And he's like, I just want to make sure that's on the table that this is most likely going to happen to you yeah. because she's at a higher risk. Is It may or may not be permanent. He's like, most of the time, if we just touch the nerve and push on it, remove the tooth, it's going to be several months, but you'll get back to normal after a while. And it's not the whole jaw, you won't see the difference. She's not gonna be slurring, she's not gonna be drooling. You're not gonna see your mouth drooling. You can talk fine, you can eat fine. It's just a feeling in your lips. So he's yeah. like, what gonna happen is, if you put on like lipstick without <laughs> looking at a mirror, you could be drawing on your chin and you don't really notice. I'm gonna do that, be like, let's do this guys. Put it on lipstick and then be like, how good is it? I'm gonna do that, that sounds like a fun <laughs> vlog. So that's pretty much the worst part of this entire surgery yeah. is the after effects that, you know, it's gonna touch the nerve and you're gonna have some numbness in your lips, but hopefully it doesn't last long. And the doctor said, best case scenario, you don't even get any, you know, numbness at all. Yeah. He's like, that definitely can happen. But he's like, in my experience, it's gonna happen a little bit because at some point they're gonna be pushing up on against the nerve, which we're gonna hope and pray for the best situation, best outcome possible. Some of you may wonder, hey, so if it's gonna cause nerve damage, why don't you just leave the teeth in? And yes, that is a possibility, but here's the question, here's the problem though. It's already causing Janice pain. Some days it hurts to eat and discomfort, and that's not exactly fun to live with. Yeah. Number two, the tooth is impacted. So that means here's your other tooth, this tooth is pushing up against that one, and it's gonna be rubbing and pushing up against it for years. Yeah. Now, in a year's time, it's not going to damage the tooth that much or any at all but the doctor said five ten fifteen years down the line if you live with it all that time in that pain it's gonna damage the other tooth so bad that you're gonna have to get not only the wisdom tooth but the tooth that was you know the wisdom tooth was touching also has to be removed yeah. imagine that's not exactly the most ideal so pick your poison now or later yep very much and later's worse now don't get me wrong guys when I did go into the oral surgeon a year ago, I, when I left after hearing all these news, I felt so defeated, like, you know. Can you blame her? Yeah, I felt so defeated. And honestly, I feel like I had a better mindset going into this appointment today. He was telling me all the same things, like, yeah, it sucks, this and that. And I was just like, you know what? I have to embrace the suck. And I said in the appointment, I'm embracing the suck. 
I have to do it and I'm more than happy to get this done. I cried about it, but guess what? We gotta keep moving forward and I gotta keep living and keep doing stuff. So these gotta come out whether I like it or not. I'm ready to get it done. So we already set up our my appointment. This will be happening, guys. And can't wait to take you guys along for that ride. And oh, it's gonna suck. So guys, I have decided to get them now before later and it's not an ideal time because of this virus, but this is what procrastination gets you. Oh, and then yeah. you have to deal with the outcome and the consequences. And I have to deal with it and I gotta go through with it and keep moving forward. But, but their protocols in the office are actually super clean. So like they have in the waiting room, they only have four seats and two on one side, two on the other. Yeah. And as soon as somebody stands up, one of the nurses runs out with like a Clorox disinfectant, sprays everything, wipes everything down before you sit down when the new person comes to. So honestly, when Paul protocol, saw that, he was like, oh. I feel confident now. I am like, Ooh, he calmed down a lot when he saw that. He's like, okay. Honestly, I love the office. Genuinely amazing. Yeah. Couldn't, I couldn't be any happier with like, I feel like the most utmost confidence in going there and you doing your surgery there. And that's what you should feel when you go to a doctor's office. You shouldn't have to beg or convince them. They should literally be so welcoming, understanding, and paint a pretty road for you and not make it so difficult and create like speed bumps on the way. And that's what I got with this office, so I'm so proud. Like I said, we have our appointment scheduled. This vlog is probably super long as it is, and this is where we are going to end it, guys. So please, like and subscribe. Help us keep spreading awareness and showing our story and how we get through life as a chronic illness couple. So guys, for now, Paul is driving, so keep your hands on the wheel. There you go. For now, guys, or I will close with you. Adieu and goodbye. <laughs>